five. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Kurnitsky of the Toronto Foundation, as I mentioned. Um, so I'm going to go into probably a bit more of an overview rather than for the nitty gritty of, of the application process of just the uh, grant opportunities of, of the foundation. Um, I'll, I'll start off by talking a little bit about uh, what the Toronto Foundation is and what we do. Um, and then I'll just talk about the, the opportunities and, and offer a few tips of the kind of things we're looking for. Um, so just to start off with the, the Toronto Foundation. So this is our mission and vision. So um, we, we have more than 500 funds at the Community Foundation um, and about more than uh, $400 million under, under management. Um, we're one of Canada's largest charitable foundations. So our mission is to connect philanthropy with community needs and opportunities, um, ensuring vitality in Toronto and uh, ensuring that it's the best place to live, work, learn, and grow uh, through the power of giving. So just to give you a bit of a sense about what a community foundation is. So we, um, rather than a, a very standard or conventional foundation where it might be a corporation or a very wealthy family that starts a foundation, a community foundation has funds that we uh, manage for individuals and families um, as small as about $25,000 and, and above. And, and we, we manage the money, take care of the investments, take care of the kind of back office um, filings to CRA um, so that our, our fund holders can focus on their own giving. Uh, I'll just go here. This is kind of our, our business model. But so the donor services is really kind of the crux of um, like the bare bones of, of what we do. So the donor, in donor services. So, so we do support those families, setting up funds and the endowments so they can really focus on their giving. Um, but in addition to that, we also engage in a few other things. So community knowledge is one of our, um, we, we affectionately call these our, our three bubbles and they kind of represent, as you can see, our, our, uh, our logo here. But the community knowledge is, is really kind of our, um, maybe our sweet spot or our secret sauce of, of what we do at the foundation. So not only are we helping uh, individuals and families uh, with their giving, but we also get to know the community and understand what the needs are. So. Uh, one of the best ways we do this is through our Vital Signs report, um, which I've got a few copies here, and, and are is available on our website for download. And, and what Toronto's Vital Signs is, is it's um, a, a report that we put together every year of data um, from all different sources, non nonprofit, government, corporate sector, uh, academia, to really understand um, quality of life issues in the city. And it allows us to help our donors who we're supporting, as well as um, in our grant making activities and understanding what the needs are in the community, how things are changing, where things are doing well, where there is room for improvement. Um, city building uh, is our kind of third pillar of, of what we do. So not only are we helping donors and helping give away money and helping uh, to understand and sharing information with, with Torontonians about what's going on in the city, but we help to bring people together to find uh, solutions to some of those problems. So the Vital Toronto Fund um, is where we get our money for our, our public grant streams. So I mentioned before we've got about 500 active funds. The Vital Toronto Fund is one of them. And that's the fund that we as staff kind of have discretion over. Our staff, our board, and our, our selection committees and volunteers who help us give that money away. Um, we call it our community endowment because um, it allows us uh, to really focus on tackling some of the issues that we have identified through our convenings and through our, our Vital Science Report. Um, the Vital Toronto Fund is, is kind of established and has uh, been established for, for a few decades now and it's for something that like, individuals across the city and really across the country can decide to, uh, to support. So uh, there's not just one source of, of money, it comes from lots of different sources. People can make a one-time gift to the endowment and, um, and then we help get money away through, through grants. So really what we try to focus on with the Vital Toronto Fund is addressing our most pressing needs and, and provide tangible impact uh, with strategic grant making. So um, there's four opportunities that I'm going to talk to about kind of on a more high level um, today. So uh, vital ideas, uh, vital people, vital youth playing for keeps uh, and micro grants. These are the first three here. Like those are um, our, our kind of standard grants. Um, they, they're aimed at really kind of building the capacity of, of the nonprofit sector uh, in, in the city uh, and the charitable sector at large. Um, and then the, the micro grants is um, it's a component of our Playing for Keys program, which I'll go into in a little detail in a minute. Um, but this is really more aimed at uh, supporting kind of informal, informal or unincorporated groups 
of people, like you know, groups of neighbors to kind of help them get to know one another and get more active and then build community. So I'll just kind of go through all four of those of the, um, in, in kind of a high level just so you understand you know, what we're looking for and what we do. So vital ideas. Uh, so these are capacity building grants uh, helping to take great ideas to the next level. Um, so they are meant to increase the effectiveness of high impact initiatives in the city um, through one time strategic investment. So um, capacity building can be um, really about taking a great program and demonstrating impact and taking it to the next level. And this could be for sports organizations, it could be for the environment, it could be for organizations working really across any sector. Um, so the kinds of activities um, that these grants support um, kind of range, uh, but I think the critical thing is that it's really not program funding. It's really about um, doing better and, and helping you do, do better on the kinds of things that you're doing. Um, so up to $30,000 you can apply for and they're, they're one-year grants. So just to give you a sense of the types of activities they support, um, we, we kind of break it down into three areas, the documentation, promotion, or, or replication. So documentation is things like uh, activities that will help ensure the beneficial impact of your programming is clearly understood by your beneficiaries. So those could be like evaluation activities or research activities. I think Michelle was talking earlier about um, evaluation and understanding uh, how you're going to measure what you do. We can provide you a grant to help you put together a framework to understand the impact of, of the work you're doing. Um, promotion, so those are things like Activities that help uh, that will help you communicate the benefits of the program among those uh, who use it or can support it growing. So um, that can include like strategic advertising plans or web tools, uh, developed fundraising strategy, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, replication and expansion. So those are um, activities that encourage uh, increased use of your program um, by other organizations, other demographics, neighborhoods, and really helping you set the groundwork for the growth that's required. Uh, activities can include things like um, improved organizational or governance structure documents, plans, toolkits, that sort of thing. Um, okay, I'll move on to the next grant program, but do you, does anybody have questions about little ideas while we're on? Okay. So little people, uh, these are professional development grants for nonprofit leaders. Um, so this is meant to strengthen, uh, to, to support strengthening the sector as a whole. Um, they're funded again through the Vital Toronto Fund, up to five thousand um, dollars, and they're really to support kind of formal training or informal development opportunities that enable, uh, will help enable uh, nonprofit leaders uh, build their skills and their knowledge um, to enhance their leadership contributions to the sector as a well. whole. So these are available to leaders in the in the, in the sector who are new uh, as leaders or those who've been involved in the sector for many years. Um, and we, so we take uh, nominations from any registered charitable organization in the city of Toronto on behalf of a leadership candidate. So it's not a, a grant directly to an individual, it's really to an organization. Um, but what we're looking for is a leader who is not just really good at their job, but also um, a leader kind of in the sector as a whole. Um, the Vital Youth Plan for Keeps is the third opportunity that I'll just touch on. Um, so this is program funding. This is up to $15,000 uh, for a year. And those grants are um, to support organizations that are uh, working to increase access to high quality recreation activities for youth 12 to 18. Uh, $15,000. Um, over the course of the year, the activity starts in September. Um, but if the process is a little bit earlier, the applications will do around the end of April. Um, I'll give you some examples of kind of the, the grants that uh, we've supported through this process. So things like, so it's not directly just for sports, but it's really about increasing the leadership um, and, and uh, the development of the youth um, through sports, through recreation, through anything that's allowing um, youth to, to stay active and healthy. So I'll give you some examples of past grants or things like able-bodied or disabled youth coming together to learn elements of sports coaching, um, underserved youth in maybe a neighborhood that's rapidly changing, working together on community building projects. Um, another example is uh, you know, hard to reach youth who typically don't participate in programs necessarily, <coughs> learning how to build bicycles and, and learning how to, to, bike, to cycle around the city and navigate the city and its ravines. Um, low, 
uh, sorry, uh, we've been working neighborhoods working as a team to develop and deliver leadership training to, to younger youth using sports as a tool for community development. Um, and I'll talk about the component, uh, the, the playing for keeps component of our Vital Youth Grants stream. So Vital Youth has been around for, I don't know, about 10 years or so. And the last couple of years we've, we've created, uh, we've kind of brought in elements of the Plan for Keeps program into the Vital Youth Grants stream. So what it's really, the, the goal of that is to allow organizations to augment already existing youth programming and kind of bringing elements in uh, the citywide movement of Plan for Keeps uh, in, into, their, into their work. Um, so playing for keeps, for those who don't know, I mean Tyler, my colleague Tyler was here this morning and went through about it in, in detail, but um, it's really a collective impact project involving like more than 35 organizations across the city um, to build social capital and, and create a legacy of uh, healthier, more active and stronger communities, um, trying to, to nurture a deep and sense of belonging um, among, among people. So there's very, uh, a diverse group of uh, individuals and organizations involved and many different ways that they're involved in this initiative but neighborhood games is a component um, of this program and we've really answered that into our vital youth uh, grant stream neighborhood games is really an opportunity for individuals maybe our neighbors or colleagues or whoever who want an opportunity to, to do fun activities play together and, and stay active um, and so for, for this program, we ask that applicants talk about um, how they want to offer and organize at least eight neighborhood games. So maybe if, say you're a basketball organization and you're playing basketball throughout the year, eight, a neighborhood game that involves the programming could be having a pickup game involving and inviting members of the community to participate. So getting more people active, um, exposing the work that you do to the community, and um, getting the youth who are involved in the programming um, to participate in developing that program. So if they're uh, maybe involved in promoting the neighborhood games or figuring out ways to, to outreach, um, that's the kind of thing we're looking for. Um, so I'll just talk about the eligibility for these three grant programs before I go on to the micro grant uh, component that I wanted to talk about. So. As a charitable foundation, uh, we're obligated by law to give money to qualified donees, so those are registered charities. Um, if you don't have charitable status though, we encourage you to work with a charity and, and submit an application. The application doesn't have to come, um, it doesn't actually have to come from the charity, but it, you definitely have to have a trusteeship agreement in the application that demonstrates the, the relationship and the, and the partnership on the program. Um, we accept applications from really any charitable organization uh, across the city, and so you don't actually have to be located physically in Toronto, and your programming actually doesn't even explicitly have to occur in Toronto, but uh, the focus of your program's participants or end users must be Torontonians. That's our mandate as a, as a Toronto Foundation. Um, we accept one application per organization, per grant stream per year. So you can apply to all three grant streams, um, that's, that's totally fine, and you can apply um, year over year. Um, I'll talk about just a couple of value add components of, of getting a grant from the Toronto Foundation and what we try to do for our grantees and why it's even, um, why it's another reason why it's worth getting a grant. Because for us, it's not just about the money. I mean, the money is obviously really important, but it's also about the um, partnerships that we build with the organizations and, um, and other things. So, uh, Networking obviously um, is, is a big component of um, fundraising and getting your work known across the city. So we host an event uh, every year called Vital Toronto. We host it at Glenfield Theatre at CBC Building. Um, and it's kind of, uh, it, it's a neat way for us to showcase the work that our organizations are doing. They come and they get a certificate. We invite all of our fund holders, our partners, um, other organizations, past recipients, um, and it's essentially like an, an award ceremony and a really big networking event and you're profiled through um, media around the event. There's a red carpet. Um, someone called it once the Academy Awards for making a difference. So it's, so it's, a, it's a pretty fun way for us to profile the work that you do. Um, Toronto Turns Us On is our weekly video blog. We often showcase uh, videos from our grantees on this blog. Um, again, you know, 
promoting the work that our organization that we're funding is doing is it's really important to us. So um, it's, I think it's about 5,000 to 6,000 individuals and organizations who get the video each, each week. So we love promoting the kinds of things that we do. Um, and then the one we'll talk about too is our community knowledge center. So this is um, basically a virtual showcase of in innovative and effective organizations in the city kind of working on some of the most pressing issues that we describe it. It's, it's a public database basically that, that we uh, coordinate uh, by issue area and is arranged um, by, tra tra by uh, Trauma's Vital Science uh, issue areas, but it's searchable from everything else. So we take some components uh, from your grant applications. It's really a kind of a cut and paste and allow you to create a profile. And it's used by not just us and not just by other organizations, but media. It's, it's a frequent um, reference for media who want to find a, a subject area expert on an issue. Um, our fund holders use it to inform their grant making and, and other donors use it. So. Um, and it really, it's all, it's about 260 organizations on the Canadian Knowledge Center now. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just been a really great opportunity for us to showcase uh, organizations that receive grants or the shortlisted. Yeah. So only the grantees and shortlisted go on the Knowledge yes. Center? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the, because it, the, the purpose for us is to say that these are organizations that we know and love. We've, we've, um, they've kind of covered all the bases for us in terms of, you know, financial, financials and we, see that their work aligns um, kind of with, with the work that we're doing and, and the issue areas that we're following in Bible Science. Um, this is just kind of a screenshot of kind of what it looks like, but um, as you can see, like you can see it. Yeah, so here, I mean, you can search by the issue area, populations, and there's just some keywords. Um, yeah, that's just the... So I'll just talk quickly too about the Plain for Keeps micro grants. So micro grants are available to any Toronto resident who want to host a neighborhood game in Toronto. Um, they, as I mentioned before, they, the, the purpose of neighborhood games is to encourage and support playful activities of all kinds that are fun and enjoyable. Um, it's not really about experts. It could be anything from sports to more act, other kinds of active uh, activities, food, food security, et cetera. Um, you know, it's really about bringing people out of their communities and uh, work, you know, playing together, exercising your mind, and bodies and hearts, as I like to say. Um, so the kinds of costs that are eligible for micro grants are things like you know, purchasing or renting, like renting uh, sports equipment or party supplies, um, promoting uh, the activity that you're going to be doing, food and refreshments, that sort of thing. Um, and so these grants are administered through our 17 community uh, playing for keeps hubs, which I have the logos of all here, but you can also Go to playingforkeeps.ca. You can find out more about them. Um, so, if you're interested in get accessing these micro grants, figure out which uh, hub is closest to you and the work that you're doing, and you can get in touch with them, and then you will get a grant. Um, so, in the micro grants, I know they're they used to be reasonably small. Are they still? They're still small. They're fifty dollars. Yeah, fifty dollars per game. So it's really, I mean, it's really like if you, know, you have a soccer game where you've got a street party or something, that's, that's the kind of thing that we're, that we're supporting. Um, and so my colleague Tyler wanted me to plug right before I kind of end here, um, an event that's happening on November 21st. Um, so it's a free event uh, for anyone who is interested in getting started in coaching. So it's fundamental movement skills training at U of T Scarborough um, on Saturday, I guess that's yeah, a week uh, next Saturday. Uh, so if you're interested, go to playingforkeeps.ca and you can sign up. And if you, obviously, anybody in the room or work with any um, participants in your program and colleagues, definitely share it. It's a full day of, um, of, of learning and getting used to it. And I, I, my understanding is that it's kind of the first entree into um, the kinds of things you need to learn if you want to become a coach for any sport. And that's, that's it. So, any questions? I didn't go into too much detail about the application process, otherwise it would have been a two-hour presentation, but yeah. Will it be possible to get copies of the uh, slides? Yes, I've got copies. I think I've got about like 10 copies here, and if anybody wants to, if, I mean, I can also email you um, the slides, and I also have notes, like the notes that I spoke to are, are also in the handout. Um, I also have copies of our our annual report, but also our Weddell Toronto Fund Impact Report, and it just kind of speaks to, the reason why I brought, brought them, because it, it, we, we, in both of those publications, we showcase the organizations that we've given grants to in the past, 
and it'll give you a sense of the types of things that we fund. Um, and then our vital signs report is our, our Toronto Star snapshot. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. This is a little bit of a lengthier question. Okay. <laughs> um, so when the Pan Ams were building Pan Am facilities, one of the incentives on a Pan Am facility was that with multiple levels of government involved, the city may only put up 50 cents for a dollar in capital. Okay. Huge incentive, 40 cents comes somewhere else. Sometimes it's even below that. Yeah. So you talked about collective impact as a plan for keeps initiative. And I just want to go to a slide that we did have this morning, mm -hmm. which talked about Dennis from Tamarack, which is a, yeah. a, 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 a familiar, yeah. So when they talk about isolated impact, they talk about funders select individual grantees. Mm -hmm. When they move to collective impacts, it talks about funders use their investments as part of a bigger puzzle with multiple interacting factors. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would at all be possible for the 10% of the OS RF grants to come from a community foundation of Toronto so that we could actually do initiatives and for your 10 cents would actually be tenfold in your investment on a project? I'm not the person to answer that question. I think it's a really important point to raise. Um, it's all based on deadlines, right? Because yeah. you have to know you got your 10% and it's conditional upon it. I would ask Michelle the same question. To me, because the 10%, you may not think it's a lot of money, but for some organizations who don't want to charge, no charge program fees, it's yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we don't have anyone coming through to be able to provide that. But if our local foundation yeah. were able to support our application in a meaningful way, yeah. we'll be fully accountable. I think that would be worthy of consideration. Yeah, I'll pass it up if you want. It's not my purview, but absolutely, yeah. 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 Do you think, Michelle, that that would be workable too? It's not an ineligible cash contribution from a community foundation. Just government, right? Yeah, we're private. You're a private foundation. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> I, I, so it would be getting a grant. It would be get, so it's just so I understand your, your yeah. point. So yeah. it would be getting a grant from that fund to yeah. your organization to, 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 to be counted towards part of the cost of the program that you'd be applying to. Yeah. So if we were applying for a $50,000 yeah. program that was aligned with the values in your criteria, mm -hmm. and we were able to then apply to you for the $5,000 cash requirement, your $5,000 would then go towards a $50,000 project. And we would meet their requirement. The yeah, program. the playing for heaps, so the vital youth playing for heaps, if, if you're getting, like, so it's a $15,000 grant, but it doesn't have to be a program that only costs $15,000 to run. Yeah. No. It right. could be for a component of a bigger program. Yeah, the problem is timelines, right? Yeah. yeah. April deadline for you, right? Okay. January deadline potentially for, uh, for the ministry yeah. without guarantees yeah. and approvals. Right? Yeah, I hear that. For us, I mean, obviously I can't speak for any other funder. For us, you know, when we're looking at uh, budgets in all of our grant applications, you, we, obviously we want to know, like, like, you know, Vital Ideas is a very good example because it's more about capacity building and usually it's activities that are worth more than $30,000. So when we ask for a budget, we want to know all the activities that you're doing, what component are we paying for. We also want to know not only the money that's guaranteed, but also money that is pending money that you've applied for, just, just we have a real sense of kind of what the process is, and that definitely will, for, for us, and, you know, improve the chances, but still have to be in the dark. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask. Yeah, I just, yeah. 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 Any other questions? Great. Okay, thanks so much, everyone.